previously on Storm's Adventures. I was shunned for being excited about something else. And there's nothing wrong with shooting electricity, fire, or ice from your arm. It wasn't even because something better was coming out the next week. This is the West Reno Medical Clinic. We got the lab results back, and you have tested positive for herpes. And now, the thrilling conclusion. Shit! The following adventure has been brought to you by a severe lack of sleep and malnutrition. The past couple of weekends have been taken up by my real job, where I worked well into the night and survived only on cookies. Anyway, I now bring you Gisha Otia Part 2. Metroid Prime 3 was originally going to be a release title for the Wii, but Satoru Iwata let Twilight Princess have that spotlight, so instead Prime 3 lands over here with these other high profile games. Now I've owned this game for two years. And I played through it before. And I started this hobby well within that time period. So why wasn't a video made? Well, there are reasons. Back in the days of MP3, I was busy covering MP8. That's because on Wii.tv, there was this guy by the name of Ray Gutierrez who had already covered it. Moral of the story, the more that things change, the more they stay the same. So once again, you can blame this guy. Now, what other Metroids do I have? Of course, I have Prime 1 and 2, and here's one that doesn't see the light of day very much, Super Metroid. You might be taken back by the previous sentence, because that could be interpreted as negative. And that was the intention. I don't like this game because I can't beat Ridley! Not to say that it's a bad game. Uh, yeah, I'm well aware that I'm notorious for insulting some of the best games ever made. Let's just write this one off as not for me. This one I almost forgot I had. Metroid Fusion! Yeah, more like Metroid Confusion! I've been told that this is the easiest Metroid game ever made, which is weird because I've never been able to beat it. Plus, the internal battery died, so I lost all my saved data. That's enough of that. On with the show. I have the sudden urge to go kill a bunch of space pirates. You play as Samus Aran. Raise your hand if you thought her name was Metroid. Raise your other hand if you thought she was a he. You're a bounty hunter, and in corruption, you're teaming up with the Marine. On board the spaceship Olympus, Admiral Dane, I like that name, explains what seems like an actual plot. It's all about the Metroids and Space Pirates and Phazon. Then all hell breaks loose and you're playing what feels like an actual game. Although the intro seemed a little bit familiar, it is in fact what actually sold me on this game. Space Pirates start attacking the Olympus and you've got to fight your way back to your ship. Along the way, you had to restore a fuel cell, defend the other marines, and take a couple detours with your morph ball. One actually takes you out into the vacuum of space. You gain the ability of the officers to fight off a monster before getting on your ship and flying down to Norian to help protect the planet. That's when you learn that the Leviathan meter appears out of a wormhole, so you and the other bounty hunters have to get a generator back online to deflect the meter, and as you're doing so, Dark Samus appears and pimp slaps everybody! I actually forgot how awesome this game is! It's just... Uh... <laughs> Oh, and did I mention that you also fight Meta Ridley in the intro? I know of very few games that can throw you into the action and keep it up for this long. Although if any game keeps it up for over four hours, you might want to consult your physician. <laughs> Things simmer down a little bit after that. Samus was unconscious for an entire month, and in that time span, three more Leviathan meters had hit other planets and started corrupting them with Phazon. First of the three planets is Bryo. Why two Ys? I don't know, probably because it sounds funny when I ask why two Ys. Next, you're off to Skytown on Elysia. Skytown, that sounds kind of familiar. Oh yeah, now we see the real reason why this game was delayed. We wouldn't want anybody confused by the franchises, no, just by previous titles. Last and most jaw-dropping, you are bringing the fight to them. Yes, the Space Pirate Homeworld. And by the looks of this footage, that place probably smells like ass. As you have undoubtedly guessed, Samus has to go there and stop the spread of corruption. I'm not quite sure why Samus has to do this all alone when all the Marines are back at home playing Bioshock, but of course if it wasn't like that, we wouldn't have much of a Metroid game. The thing that I like most about Metroid Prime 3 is that it brings the franchise into the modern. Hmm, that only began to sound weird once I said it out loud. Okay, I get it, the original Metroid Prime brought this franchise to 3D almost flawlessly. Even though it switched to a first-person perspective, it maintained that it was more about exploration than combat. You need to solve puzzles with elements and blow up walls and fight some absolutely brutal bosses. And even today, I get an extra fuzzy feeling when I get a missile expansion or energy tank or power upgrade or new suit or visor that allows me to explore new parts of these worlds. But why is it such a sin to recognize improvements upon a revolution? 
Before, it was almost dreadful tricking at work, because everything's just scattered everywhere, and there's horrendous backtracking and fetch questing. In number three, you're given a general direction, and if you need to go somewhere else, you just take your ship, which last time I checked was more efficient than an elevator. And I won't forget the presentational improvements, either. Now we're given over-the-top cutscenes and voiceovers, which are some things that Nintendo franchises are hesitant to grasp. Things are getting pretty bad if I'm beginning to predict my hate mail. If I'm so against sidetracking, why do I even bother with Metroid? Okay, we'll return to the touchy subject of Bioshock. True, there is more sidetracking than there is actual game in Bioshock, but Metroid Prime 3 pretty much is sidetracking. It's probably because I'm a Nintendo fanboy. Yeah, that explanation requires the least amount of thought. I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, now let's go for a structured approach. In Bioshock, there are only two things on your to-do list. Reunite Atlas with his vagina and curb stomp Andrew Ryan. That's it! But along the way, I was told to do more and more stuff. This is some weird psychological crap that not even parents should be able to utilize. And whenever I recovered from some sidetracking, I didn't feel like I made any progress. If they would have given me 70 objectives up front, it would have felt more like I was questing across Rapture instead of dragging my feet through the entrails of little sisters. In Metroid Prime 3, you are sidetracked in the direction of something that's going to make you an even bigger killing machine. Oh, and the arm cannon never runs out of ammo. I always thought Retro was faced with an interesting challenge for the third one. If they didn't want to repeat themselves, they couldn't do the weapons and just go on the red red. Retro had to think of new weapons. Prime 1 played off of nature elements. Prime 2 played off the light and dark world elements. Prime 3 just had a flipping out and killing everything element. It seems to be based mostly in action, which is why I find it surprising that I'm pretty much the only person I know who has actually played through the game. So for my conclusion, I will say, Metroid Prime 3 is a great science fiction adventure and continues to be one of my favorite games of all time. For most other people, it's, I just couldn't get into this game. And for everybody else, wait, there's a third Metroid Prime? Controls are something that I was waiting to talk about until now. When you start the game, turn the sensitivity all the way up to advanced. This is the smoothest and best implementation of shooting on any console ever. It's how Metroid Prime was meant to be played. Speaking of which... <laughs> I believe the Metroid Prime trilogy is a great investment, and it gives me a chance to reflect on the previous two. Metroid Prime was the first game that I had played in this franchise, and oh man, did I ever hate it. I had no idea what to do. All I did was fumble around the game and occasionally got angry at it when it told me I couldn't go somewhere. Somehow, I eventually made it to Metroid Prime itself, but I had so few upgrades when I got there that I couldn't get past its first form, and the only way I was going to beat it was to start it all over with player's guide in hand. I was so pissed. I was like... I had a different response to Prime 2. I really don't care what you have to say, because I like that game. I know that Light and Dark World isn't the most intriguing concept, but at least I got to talk to somebody in this adventure. I never really cared much for the isolation element, but the biggest improvement was they took out that stupid saxophone from the Space Pirate Music MIDI. And they gave us trackable objectives. I would really like to know what Retro Studios is up to next. Are they going to finish Ravenblade? Or are they going to take their talents to a competitor? Well, this we guy who Studios. coincidentally looks a lot like when my dad assures us that Retro Prime Studios is a Nintendo developer. Yeah, just like Factor 5, Silicon Knights, and Rareware. Now, I don't want anybody to continue thinking that I still hate Metroid Prime. I could hardly say so now that I've memorized the location of pretty much every upgrade. I'd say it's less like beer and more like athlete's foot. Not quite an acquired taste, but instead, it grows on you.